Hey everyone, checking back in on Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and Gollum. We got a lot of action going on, a lot of bearish action. There's still trades to be made to the upside. Personally, I've started withdrawing my funds as I do believe that the euphoric top has been reached for now. I'm not saying anything about the future. Certainly, there is still upside potential. But I do believe that we are going to be in a more consolidation style pattern over the next few weeks. And... I am still keeping some money on and I am still making trades. I'll just point out a trade that I just made on Ethereum. But first off, I want to start on the weekly time frames. Well, actually, first off, I want to just say a word here. We're seeing a lot of fear and a lot of emotions and a lot of people questioning themselves, right? So I keep saying how important it is to have our game plan. If you are long, you are long, right? You don't care about this action. This shouldn't sway you. And we're, what we're seeing is... Everybody is starting to question the fundamentals of these cryptocurrencies and what's going on when in reality, over the two months where Ethereum has gone from $50 to $400 and 800% gain, not much in the terms of the fundamentals have changed. We've had some ICOs and things like that, but in terms of the actual fundamentals, not much has changed. It's the price action that is affecting people's emotions, making them question themselves, making them want to sell, things like that. And personally, as a trader, I, of course, I've already sold and I'm, I'm being very limber, is that the right word, nimble with my uh, positions and being quick with them because we are in a downtrend and now I don't want to be fighting the, the trend. I don't want to be swimming upstream. I want to get the bounces, I want to get my profit, and I want to get out. If you are long, don't let this price action sway you. We have so many people in this space that are not traders. I am involved when, with some Facebook groups and some in-person groups and I'm seeing it across the board where everybody's getting a little freaked out. But you cannot see a move like this without consolidation. Anybody that trades stocks, there is absolutely no surprise with what's going on. This was expected. I thought it would have happened by now. I was very surprised we went to 400 on Ethereum. I was very surprised we went to 3,000 on Bitcoin before this happened. And you cannot go 800% without a significant pullback. And by significant, I'm talking you know, 30 50% from the top, considering you went 800% from where we were just two months ago. So here on the weekly time frame, we pointed out the bearish reversal candlesticks that we're forming. We are confirming them with a little bit further weakness. So zooming in on the daily time frame for Bitcoin, Bitcoin started to see the first amount of weakness because this initial pullback from the top of 3000 was more significant than in Ethereum and Litecoin. But one thing that does stand out is the higher lows are maintained. That's all the bulls care about right now. That being said, we do need to be a bit cautious of a potential bearish reversal head and shoulders pattern. That would be... Let's draw it here, our left shoulder, the head, and the right shoulder. And this pattern is marked by a neckline of support. So I would use the wicks on this just because the wicks are so significant with these big dumps and then the big bounces. But if we were to break this neckline, most notably the price point of 2050, that would be a significant bearish break and the bears would start to take over. If that holds, we continue the higher low pattern. So 2050 is the must hold level here on the daily time frame because we could pull all the way back to 2100 and it would still be a higher low keeping the bulls in control. So where we currently stand, we formed our lower high. So we have our top, our low of the pullback, our lower high has been set up here at 2782 and now we'll see if we can form a higher low somewhere we just saw a bunch of bearish action the bulls bought the dip a bit and then we flipped over to a new day we're seeing the bulls buy the dip a little bit more and what we're seeing is the rsi change so in these videos you've been watching how we've been just trading based off the rsi and it's been very easy things have changed a bit the first change that we saw in this space was on the five minute time frame where the dip under 30 RSI was no longer the signal to go long. We had double dips. We had a dip under 30, a short term bounce, another dip to oversold, and then the bounce would play out. Now we're seeing that happen on the hourly time frame. So here's Bitcoin hitting oversold, seeing a short term bounce, and then seeing further downside and seeing a double dip into these oversold conditions. So it's the double dip, the second dip, that lets us know to be entering, to be looking for this bounce to play out. So we've seen some decent bounces, but again, we have to be quicker here. We're not in an uptrend right now on these hourly time frames, so we can anticipate lower highs to form, and we need to get our profit, if we're trading here, get our profit and exit, because further downside continues to happen here. So even now, we just had an all-out dump into this afternoon, into the evening, and we're seeing a very solid bounce play out, but... If we do not break 2625, it is just another lower high, keeping the bears in full control. And I absolutely expect a lower high to form. So on this bounce, in order for the bulls to have momentum going forward, we have to see our lower high set. Let's say that happens right now, which it looks like it is at 
25.53, we have to pull back, form a higher low compared to the low that we hit, and then see continuation and a bull break to break to higher highs. And unless that happens, the bears are just going to continue with lower highs and lower lows. So I've been watching the four-hour time frame now and not so significant on, on Bitcoin here. But we can see a little bit more condensed information just coming from the top, the all-out dump, the lower high being set now. Now the bulls are trying to form this higher low, and we'll see what momentum can gather here. But I do, again, I do anticipate that we are going to see a lower high form, which I believe we just did. And the question now is going to be, can we form a higher low? And how we're going to gauge that, whether or not we can or not, is the amount of volume. If we see declining bear volume on this pullback, as we try and form a higher low, we will look for the bulls to establish that higher low and then look for continuation back to the upside. And we have to break 25.54 in order for the bulls to try and see that continuation. ETH on the weekly time frame, bearish reversal spinning top confirmed. Obviously, that long lower wick was the all-out dump. And how about how about Coinbase giving money back when they don't have to? That's awesome in the space and really cool to see that a large company would do that. So confirming the bearish reversal candlestick, let's look at it on the daily time frame because the momentum has shifted and things have turned. We have our high, low of the pullback. There's our support line. We've got our lower high was established, the high of that bounce. Let's clean things up here. So let's actually go with our all-time high. Low of the pullback, lower high. Look at our double bottom right off this level. And I'm also noticing support and resistance levels. I don't use them as much as the RSI, but I'm going to start now. And it's not exact. So here, 253, and we dip down to 251.30. So $1.70 on a $250 instrument, not very significant. I call that a double bottom. Obviously, it's not exact, but that is clearly where the bulls established support and saw the bounce begin to play out. Now, I made a trade here where I made too bullish or too soon of an entry. And I use the four hour chart as a guide. So let's look at the hourly chart. So I was playing this dump, and here we see the all out dump. Look at our double dip. So we dip into oversold, short term bounce, dip into further oversold. Then we had a little bit of a bounce play out, and then an all out dump again. So I was playing this all out dump. I got in too soon. I got in when the RSI was about just above 20. And I was scaling in as I do and as I pointed out in the past. So this is the candlestick that I was entering on, this this one right here. And I was entering, I think it was 276.10, 275.10, 274.10, 273.10, just the whole way down, averaging down as each one was filled. And then from there, we didn't see the follow through that the bulls were expecting. And at, at one point, I was holding a position that was down $20 in the red. And had I sold down $20 in the red, it would have been a pretty sizable loss. That being said, the hourly RSI being in the teens was one reason that I was not going to be selling. I, I accepted at one point that I was just going to be looking for break even, and I was very confident that I'd be able to get break even because of the RSI levels. I just needed to be patient. But it was the four hour RSI. So I look at the four hour chart, and I see this setup for me here. This was not a bullish reversal candlestick at this point, but I could see it was going to be a volume climax. I could see the volume with how much time was left in the candlestick was going to be the highest that we've seen in quite some time. And the volume or the RSI at that point, when this candlestick was down at the low, when we were in the 250s, this RSI, I zoomed back and I saw, okay, historically what happens when this RSI is at this level? And I found out that this was the lowest the four hour RSI had been in 2017. So that is six months and we were at the lowest RSI point that made me even more confident to hold my position, be a little bit more patient, wait for the oversold bounce to play out. So here on the hour, hourly time frame, we got our oversold bounce on increasing bull volume. I exited half my position at break even as that's all I wanted to do is to avoid that big red loss. And then from there, I scaled out the second half and actually ended up with a profit. So here it looks like our top is in as well. 293 is that top at this point. And it's the same story as Bitcoin. We have to pull back on declining bear volume. And I can already tell with 13 minutes left in this hourly candlestick, this is some pretty significant bear volume compared to the bull volume on the way up. So this would make me more cautious. I would be looking for a re-entry here, perhaps around 270, upper 260s is when I'm going to be scouting for a bullish entry. And it will be more easy for me to make that bull entry if I see the five minute RSI is oversold because I am going to anticipate a higher low here. I do not think we're going to just pull right back and dump to lower lows. We're going to pull back, form a higher low, form a lower high, watch this hourly chart tighten up a little bit. And if we do get a five minute RSI that is oversold as we approach an area where we can expect a higher low to form, that's when I'm going to start making my entry. And I will only be looking for about a $5 scalp at that point. Just some quick profit 
to get in and get out and take it from there. So now, depending on how this candlestick closes, you can see the, the lower wick starting to form here. So some bulls are buying this dip. We have to factor that in. So if, if we do see big high volume, but it is a nice long lower wick, we know a lot of that is bull volume of bulls buying that dip. So that's going to be a factor as well here as we see the volume continue to pick up, but the bulls are buying some of this dip. So we'll see how this candlestick closes in 12 minutes. So it is the same thing for Bitcoin. If you're trading, trading Bitcoin rather than Ethereum, you can be looking for a higher low to form here. Look at the volume here. I would be more comfortable looking for a higher low here on Bitcoin because the volume with 12 minutes to go in this candlestick is only half of the previous bull volume candlestick, whereas Ethereum, that volume is much more significant. So same thing, we will anticipate a higher low. I would be looking around the 2480s is when I'd start to be scouting. And again, it would be easier if the five minute RSI were oversold as we hit those 2480s to be looking for a bullish entry. So where we stand from here, on the daily time frames for these names is that we're looking at these lower highs and lower lows what i do anticipate is a lower high to form on ethereum and i don't believe we're done testing this level and it's potentially shaping up to be a descending triangle pattern where we have our lower highs and our horizontal base of support let me get rid of some of these lines here to make it more clear but it would be our base of support our declining resistance line where we see our lower highs rejecting so i would absolutely be looking at this level here in the low 300s as a resistance point and watching the range get tighter tighter until we see a clear bull break or a clear bear break checking in on litecoin weekly chart for litecoin just form a bearish reversal candlestick last time we saw a similar candlestick it was met with multiple weeks of consolidation so on the daily time frame for litecoin we've got a pullback here where we had our all-time high low of the pullback lower high higher low and then a lower low this this dump that we had today broke this consolidation pattern on increasing bear volume and definitely favors the bears it was the lowest price we've seen in a week and a half so here we saw the same scenario where we had an oversold dump the rsi didn't get as oversold on litecoin here but it's a similar bounce what stands out on this bounce so it's the first thing that you should be looking at here and saying hmm that doesn't look like the others that's the volume this is declining volume that tells us the bulls are tiring so here we are setting our lower high at 41.98 that is the top of this bounce for now and the bulls will have to pull back and find a higher low compared to our low and that lowest price that we did hit down here was down at 38.27 so i would be looking for a potential bullish entry around the 40 dollar mark same thing five minute oversold rsi as we approached 40 psychological support would make things easier for potential bullish entry anticipating that equilibrium pattern is going to form in all these names because that is the most likely pattern that forms after high volume and high volatility in any market that is traded by human beings we look for that equilibrium pattern after an all-out dump or an all-out breakout so that's what we're going to be looking for here on these three names Gollum here had an all-out dump as well here's the daily chart for Gollum. we've got a or this is the weekly actually, but it is a bearish reversal spinning top on the weekly. So we do need to be cautious of that. But here on the daily time frame, we have a significant pullback. So look at this 20 period. This is the 20 period moving average. And I don't usually move use moving averages here, but when I see it hold so many times, test after test after test, we keep holding this moving average and we just held it again. Bulls need to continue holding this level. Closing below it would stand out showing bearish weakness. Now support from here, we can see the low that we pulled back to on this dump today was significant significantly lower the bulls really wanted to hold 21.5 that was where all these resistances were before the all-time high bull break and we were holding 21.5 here initially but we did end up losing that level so we're left with the lower high and lower low the bulls are trying to see an oversold bounce play out the same as the other three names we have the entire sectors here altcoins and major players as well in the same pattern with the all-out dump the rsi was very oversold we are now seeing an oversold bounce begin to play out and we have to pull back and form a higher low and then a higher high in order for the bulls to have any momentum going forward. So that's what we're looking at on all these names. I am, well, I don't want to stay up all night to try and get this trade, but there is going to be another trade opportunity on these hourly timeframes when we do look for a higher low to form and this equilibrium pattern to form. And what this setup can be here, this trade setup, not only can you be looking for a $5 scalp, as I, as I said, but you could put yourself in a position where if you get an entry let's use this example here of ethereum so our low that we must hold is 251.30 let's say we start to pull back and we see multiple hours of further consolidation and we get to 270 
and we say, okay, five minute RSI is oversold. We're at 270. I think our higher low is going to be established here in this equilibrium pattern. And you make a bull entry at 270. You can set your stop loss depending on how much risk you want to take on, but you can set your stop loss below 250. So if we break 250, that means we're dumping to lower lows and the bears have complete control. That would stop you out of the trade. Obviously use a stop limit so you don't get stopped out at 10 cents. And the stop limit, the limit is the amount where you say, give me cash for these this position, but only if it's for at least this much. So that would be our stop loss level. We would then enter the trade 270. Ideally, we shortly thereafter see the bulls start to show back up and head back up towards the high. And then we see the tightening pattern, higher lows, lower highs, and we stick with our position. And from there, we can either put a stop loss at break even, or we can give the bulls a shot here to make a bull break of this 293 level to see continuation in higher highs. So it depends on how much risk to reward you want to take on. If you want to lock in that $5 gain, give me my quick profit. I'm going to bed. That's one scenario. If you want to see it play out and potentially get a bull break in continuation, which in this scenario, I likely am not going to do because again, we are in a downtrend and that would be fighting the trend, trying to see continuation to the upside. But that is another scenario where you are you are looking for more reward. You're looking for a bigger trade. So you're going to have to be more patient for that. So that's the way it's all going to play out. And again, I don't anticipate this to happen until the wee hours of the morning here on the East Coast. So we'll see how it plays out when we check back in. I appreciate you watching. Hope you have a good night. See you soon.